Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here with a project for Not Too Shabby. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to do with this super cute Halloween stamp set. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be making a super cute Halloween card, but it's also going to be super easy. We're going to do just a little bit of masking and stenciling to add color without coloring the image. For the stamp set, I'm using the Not Too Shabby Happy Halloween. This is full of just cute images. I cannot wait to use this adorable candy corn. But for today, because I'm going to be using the Bubbling Over Background Stencil, which at the time of recording this video, there's a handful left, I wanted to use this little cauldron down here that had the bubbles in it. I thought that would go well with this in the background. I will add more products and tools as I get into the process, and I will make sure to let you know what those are. If I do leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I will be stamping the image and sentiment from the set onto the center of my piece of white cardstock. Now to ensure that I have it within the area that will be stenciled and ink blended later, I go ahead and put it into my mask. Now this is just something I created for myself here at home. It has some markings at the corners for a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece. So before I taped those down, I did make sure that they were lined up with those markings. Now I'm going to have my cauldron be toward the bottom of the opening and the sentiment at the top, and that way it looks like it's bubbling up into the air above the cauldron. Once I have the stamp centered in the opening, I pick them up with the door of the Misty and I go ahead and ink them up and stamp them. Now this is a new stamp, so you'll see me rubbing off those manufacturing oils before I ink it up for the first time. Now because it is a new stamp and my ink pad is a little bit dry, I did ink it up and stamp it twice. Now before I move on, I did want to go ahead and make sure that this was nice and dry, so I brought in my heat tool and just for a few seconds dried that ink. Now you will want to be careful that you don't melt your stencil or whatever mask you're using for this. Speaking of mask, next I brought in some masking paper and I cut a piece off the roll that would fit the stamped image. Now it did end up getting a little bit of the sentiment still, but I just wanted to focus mainly on the cauldron. Now once that was stamped, which it doesn't have to be as crisp as on the card front, you could always cut this out with some fine tip scissors, but for me I went ahead and took it over to my brother's scan and cut and had the machine do the hard work. Now it's time to do our first layer of ink blending and for this I'm going to be using a green ink from my stash but before I can start I do need to get my mask put in place. I do my best to line it up with the stamped image and once that's pressed down nicely I'm going to get to inking. I do go over the area in the middle a couple times and I use a pretty light hand on both of these. I do usually like to go in from the edge with a clockwise and then counterclockwise motion just to get all the ink off my brush. Once I have a first layer down, I knew I wanted to add a little bit more so I went back over it again. Now one thing I do want to mention here is if you don't have a mask like I do, which you might have a fancier one in fact, you can always use strips of masking tape, you could use post-it notes, use what you have to make it work. Now once I have the first color down, I'm going to leave that mask in place and I place my bubbling over stencil where I thought I would get a good amount of bubbles and then I taped that in place again. 
Then I'm just going to do the same thing with the same ink, going back over those air open areas a couple times. Now for this, I did add a little bit more pressure because I do want to make sure that when I reveal the image here in a minute, that those bubbles stand out. And speaking of the reveal, it is time for my most favorite part, and that is pulling back any stencils and masks that are on the image. I love how you can add color to this with just that single layer, and the stamp in the middle still stands out since it remains black and white. Off camera, I cut and folded a green card base, and I did some die cutting as well with some stitched rectangles. For the first one on the right, this will go on the inside, and if you look closely, I did faintly stamp the cauldron in a stamp on stamp off in the green ink for the inside. This way later, the personal message will stand out from the green background, but you can still see the writing over the cauldron. I also used more of those stitched rectangle nesting dies, and I cut out my image and a piece of black cardstock for a small mat. I adhered all of those pieces together, starting with the inside and then my layers on the front. And now because you know I wanna add just a little bit of sparkle before I call it done, I brought in some holographic sequins from my stash and I added some around the image. Now I tried to get them onto bubbles that were already ink blended on there so I knew that they would be spaced well, but I also added a couple around the outside and next to the cauldron. I ended up adding a total of five sequins and you'll see some are on the edge between the ink blended piece and that outside white border. I just like how those broke up the lines and having five on there is going to play into that rule of odds in art. And here are some close up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this quick and easy card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.